Hello and welcome to another episode of History with Andy Ackright. I'm Andy Ackright. I made a video about the Battle of Westport and a mass grave, and it has about 400 views, but a lot of questions as to where I got my information. So I want to talk to you about it. Now, am I a historian? No. Do I have a degree in history? No. But I like learning about things. And when I learn about things, I want to share them. So that's what I'm going to do. Today I'm in Luce Park, okay, in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm surrounded by 55th Street, 51st Street, Warnell, and Summit. Okay, these are very important streets. Here we have the Confederates losing in the South. So they're going to come up and they're going to want to try to take Missouri. Okay, so they're going to try to take Missouri. They come up and they don't really have a problem with St. Louis. But then they go to Jefferson City and they do have a problem and they say, we're getting out of Jefferson City. We're going over to Independence and Kansas City. So you can see down here, they come up St. Louis, coming over Jefferson City, over here to Lexington, Independence, Kansas City, Leavenworth. And how about that right there? Westport, the Battle of Westport. That's what we're talking about right here. So the Battle of Westport starts and we have the battle at Little Blue River, Big Blue River. And this is about 63rd Street and right by the zoo. So it's a, a cool place right by the zoo uh, to go check out. And the fighting goes back and forth and back and forth. And the, the both sides deploy a lot of troops. Okay. Now, at Byram's Ford, Okay, on by the big blue, the Confederates come across and they take over a Union fort. So they take over this abandoned Union fort and they have their station there. So now they have that right there. And General Price takes his troops southward. He was directing the supply wagon, 600 wagons, 5,000 head of stock, and 5,000 unarmed recruits southwesterly. But he's going to bring his troops back up, his armed troops. So he has his armed troops here, 10,000 men, right just south of Brush Creek, and Shelby's division is here, Fagan's division's here, right? So they come and the Union troops are pushed back. I want to read this to you. At dawn, Union troops crossed the icy waters of Brush Creek, pushed through the timber up the hill and across the plain to 55th Street. Through the morning mist came Confederate cavalry. The blue skirmish line finally fell back, retreating across the creek. The Confederates waited on the crest for ammunition to be reissued. You stand where Confederate General Price watched that morning by a tree. The tree now gone became known as the General's Tree. That's why history is so cool. Right there was General Price, the Confederate General, watching as his troops pushed back the Union troops. And that's 55th Street. That's what we're talking about, 55th Street, right there. So General Price right here is watching his troops push the Union troops back. Not once, but twice. Okay, so the Union troops come not once, but twice. They're gonna come a third time but fate intervenes in the name of George Toman. George Toman is a guy who's upset because the Confederates took his gray mare, right? So they, they took his mare, and so he's gonna tell the Union how to go up this hill and around and flank the Confederate unions, union, units. Meanwhile, General Blunt is attacking from the front, and they have a very fiery fight. Okay, just a very nasty, bloody fight. Uh, and it goes all the way down to by the Bent House, which is still there near 55th and Ward Parkway. Finally, superior Union numbers finally took their toll. The Confederates slowly gave up ground. So they started going to the south. Now, we still have Byram's Ford and Big Blue River, but the Confederates are outnumbered two to one, and they don't have enough ammunition. So basically the Union just takes over, just takes them over, and 
the Confederates lose their position. So the uh, the uh, Confederates, sorry about that, start going to the south, and there's General Shelby and his Iron Brigade, his last desperate stand behind stone fences, now 71st Street, which stretched towards state line. His right flank fought where Forest Hill Cemetery is now, and this is interesting. They have a monument for Confederate soldiers, and he is buried there, and George Toman, the one who had the mayor that was stolen, who changed everything, is also buried there. Okay. So the delay of the Confederate troops getting there really makes everything come and fall back. So the Confederates are falling back. Now, how do I know about this burial, right? Well, we have the wagon train escape. So General Price, well, comes and, and takes his his wagon train and takes that back and it says no time to bury the dead dead and wounded were left on the fields to be gathered by the up by local farmers one mass grave was near 55th Street and Ward Parkway where I filmed that other video John Warnell's home 61st Terrace and Warnell served as a field hospital for both sides so they had multiple mass graves but one of them is near 55th Street and Ward Parkway Okay, so you, you are burying 3,000 men, both Union and Confederate, and you have these mass graves. And that's how I know about this, because I wanted to read the sign. Now you have the Union chasing down the uh, Confederates, and they ca chase them down, boom, 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 all the way down here until the uh, Confederates disband in Arkansas. December 2nd, 1864. So about 3, 30,000 men fought, 10,000 Confederates, 20,000 Federals. This one says that some estimate 3,500 were killed or wounded, though no one knows exactly. Most people say about 3,000. But here it is, dead and wounded were left on the fields to be gathered up by local farmers. One mass grave was near 55th Street and Ward Parkway, John Warnell's home, 61st Street and Warnell. That's Warnell Street. That's 55th Street, 55th and Ward Parkway, Mass Grave, 61st Street and Warnell, the John Warnell Home and the Hospital. Right here, General Price watching the battle. History is real. This is Loose Park. People are jogging. People are having fun. People are walking their dogs. People are in hammocks and they don't even realize what went on here. They don't take the time to read the signs. The Battle of Westport was here. History is here in Kansas City. Important history. And because of this battle, this was the final large battle west of the Mississippi. And so it really did make a great change in the Civil War. This was an important battle and it happened right here in Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.